Welcome to this uh, Sunday morning worship, which is coming to you from Cantley Methodist Church in Doncaster. And my name is the Reverend Jonathan Gishara. I want to begin with a call to worship. And this is uh, from Psalms 117. Praise the Lord, all ye nations. Extol him, all ye peoples. For great is his love to us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Let us pray together. Creator God, maker of all that is, we offer you our praise. You brought light out of darkness, day for our fulfillment and night for our rest. You raise mountains, you laid low the plains. You filled the seas with the life and sprinkled the sky with the stars. You formed people, children, women and men, diverse and complex, creative and beautiful. We praise you and we adore you. Create and God, maker of all that is. We want to confess that we are not always the kind of people that we ought to be. We have manned your creation with violence and the attitudes of ignorance. We have made your creation ugly. Forgive us, O Lord, for not treading gently on sacred ground. We thank you that you have promised to hear us when we call when we come together, two or three in your name. We offer this prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, alone be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This morning, I want us uh, to sing together or to listen to the hymn, Come, Now It Is Time to Worship. Uh, if you are looking at uh, singing the faith, which uh, the Methodist Jews quite often is number 24. Come, now it is time to worship. Every knee will bow to the great 
time to worship. And now is the time to give your heart. Just as you are to worship, come. Just as you are before your God. Come. Now is the time to worship. Come. Just as you are before your God. I want to read the ones from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. It is called, Jesus calls for fishermen. After John had been put into prison, Jesus went to Galilee and preached the good news from God. The right time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Turn away from your sins and believe the good news. As Jesus walked along the shore of Lake Galilee, he saw two fishermen, Simon and his brother Andrew, catching fish with a net. Jesus said to them, Come with me and I'll teach you to catch people. At once they left their nets and went with him. He went a little further on and saw two other brothers, James and John. They were sons of Zebedee. They were in their boat getting their nets ready. As soon as Jesus saw them, he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and went with Jesus. Uh, I'm sure many of us uh, remember the BBC series called The Apprentice. The Apprentice. The star character was a man called Lon Sugar. And Lon Sugar's famous phrase, his magical phrase was, you are fired, you are fired. Nobody wanted to hear those ones. When the contestants, when a contestant heard those ones, he, she knew that uh, their fate was sealed. Those freebies from Lon Sugar uh, and eluding them they were not to get uh, those uh, loan, uh, interest-free loans, to, uh, which they could use to start their business. I think Jesus used almost similar ones, but this time it was not you are fired. Jesus would have used ones like you are hired, you are consecrated, come on board, come with me. Come follow me. In the readings of last week, uh, in the lectionary, it was a, 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 another call uh, of Jesus to disciples. To the disciples, in the Gospel of John, uh, we read about the call of Philip. And when Jesus met with Philip and called him, Philip in turn went and called a man called Nathaniel. And he told him, we have found the Messiah. We have found the one whom the prophets and uh, uh, the books of the law wrote about. Come and see, come and see. The readings for this morning, uh, Jesus has just been baptized in the Jordan, all the Gospels agree that uh, Jesus has come out into the desert and he has been uh, baptized in the Jordan by John. And then the Spirit 
has descended upon him kind of to strengthen him for the mission that he's going to embark on. And then the voice has come, a voice of affirmation, this is my son, uh, my beloved son, in him I'm very happy, in whom I'm well pleased. A voice of approval, Jesus has been approved of God. And in the quick succession, he has been lent to the descent uh, to be tempted of the devil. And also, not just temptation, but also to think through what kind of mission he was going to engage in. Was he going to be uh, a Messiah who surprises people and uh, kind of uh, magically, you know, gets people to believe in him or is he going to be a messiah who preaches the kingdom is he going to throw himself down from the pinnacle in jerusalem and uh, magically get people to follow him or is he going to uh, invite people to the kingdom well events follow one another we are told that when he returns home in Nazareth, if two things happen. One, he finds that people don't like him. Uh, they are not excited about him. Jesus, who, who, who does he claim to be? I mean, we know him, we, we know his mother, we know his father, we know his brothers. What does he, I mean, this, this young man, what does he claim to be? But number two, is that uh, his cousin John, the one who baptized him, he has not only been arrested by one of the sons of Herod the Great, a uh, young man called Herod Antipas, but shortly John loses his life uh, in the hands of the same man. And so the kingdom, the business, of publishing the kingdom, preaching the gospel, the good news is left to Jesus. And uh, when he's rejected, he goes from his hometown of Nazareth down to Galilee, uh, to the Sea of Galilee, which was about 30 miles away from home. And this is where now the action takes place. Uh, he goes about recruiting people. Uh, he meets you and he says, you are hired. He does not tell you that you are fired. He says, you are hired. See the candidates in Lord Sugar's uh, episodes, they sort it out. They sort it out. And, and, and even though they are sorting it out, they hear those dreaded ones. Not so with Jesus. Uh, he says, you are consecrated come follow me. I don't know about you whether those ones you have ever had those ones or even a variation of those ones. Uh, John or Mary from today you are high end. Have you ever had those ones from Jesus? I was 19 years uh, I was in my last year of GSCSC, it would probably be like from six college here. And uh, God simply spoke to my heart and said, young man, I think you, you are going the wrong direction. I was popular with the other boys. I was doing well in school, but uh, I knew that there were matters in my own heart, my own life that were not okay. Uh, and so that one day, one Saturday morning, there was a big rally in our school, a Christian rally. And we, and a lot, we invited a lot of schools, boys and girls. And so the hall was full. And as the speaker was preaching, I heard I felt that I couldn't, I couldn't just sit down. I, interp I interrupted the speaker and raised my hand and said from today, 
I chose to follow the Lord Jesus. And I sat down, uh, tears were flowing my, down my cheeks. It was a moment of shame because there were a lot of girls and, and boys in the school, uh, you know, guests that we had invited. Uh, I'm, I'm saying we because I was one of the people involved in invite, inviting them. But uh, it was a moment also of joy because my sins were forgiven. God consecrated me. Uh, God said uh, you are higher. And Jonathan, from today you are higher. And I think that's that really what changed my life change my ambition. Uh, I think that's why I'm here to speak to you uh, about this Jesus who spoke to my heart. When Peter and his brother Andrew and the sons of Zebedee met with Jesus, they ch he changed their professions and he said, now from today, you are no longer going to be fishermen. You are no longer going to fish people. Uh, uh, fish. <clears throat> I'm going to make you to fish people. Uh, when I was in Sunday school, we used to sing, I'll make you fishers of men, fishers of men, if you follow me. Uh, forgive the masculine language, masculine, masculine language of those days. But uh, yeah, basically Jesus is saying, I'm going to make you a fisher of people. I'm going to make you a fisher of people. Following Jesus is, 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 not, is not some dogma or some rituals. It's possible to belong to a church, but still don't belong to Jesus. You know, that, that's, they are not one and the same. Because you need to commit your life, you need to decide your matter with God and say, you know, this is thing is for me, this faith is for me, this thing, this faith works, and I'm going to follow him. I want to recommend to you uh, today uh, to follow this wonderful Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let us pray together. Lord, we pray for your world that you made. You said it was very good. We want to hold this world before you where there are conflicts and um, bring peace. Where there are disasters, bring healing, earthquakes and other catastroph catastrophes. Especially this, this time we hold your world before you, O God. When the world is reeking under the threat of coronavirus and uh, all the mutations thereof, Lord, please route this disease for us. We hold your church before you, the church militant, that, O God, your church who bear uh, the prophetic word of God, who preach the gospel, who share your words of grace with the world, and people who come to believe in the one who loved us so much. I pray for families, especially those with the sick persons or who have lost a loved one. Please, Lord, comfort them and give the world hope. We offer this prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our last hymn is In Christ Alone My Hope is Found.
the stone is silent in the front of the faces trapped in stone. What heights of love, what depths of ease, when fears are still, we're striving to cease, but I stand. In Christ is the Lord, in the Lord of flesh, formed as a God in helpless pain, in still in righteous mess, so he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God. Let us uh, say the benediction together. Now to him is, who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout the all generations forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his fish to shine on you, and give you his grace and peace. Amen. <laughs>